This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, college football fans, and welcome to the Primetime Podcast. My name is Ricky Whitmer, and as always, I'm joined by the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And before we get started on today's podcast, I want to go ahead and pump our Patreon page. If you love what you get for Most Valuable Podcast and you want a little bit more, go check out our Patreon page down below in the description. We got some cool rewards for you guys. And for those of you who, like I said, want to support us a little bit more, $1 a month, you can get an extra podcast, our first one for May, over an hour of content, only for a dollar. So why not? And you may be thinking, hey, Ricky, uh, Brandon sounds different again today. What did you do with him? Well, Brandon went home to see his mother for Mother's Day. How How is how is your mother, Brandon? No, Denise is doing very well. We had a very nice day. Me, my mom, and my dad had a nice day yesterday. It was, it was a very nice day. How was, how was the day with your mother, Ricky? Uh, it, wa- it wasn't too bad. Just my mom's the kind of person that's like, you know what? Leave me alone. Give me some space. Okay, happy Mother's Day. And then she likes to do her own thing. So it was kind of like a, oh, happy Mother's Day. I love you. And then, okay, you want to do your own thing. So it, it was a nice weekend. Wait, what'd you, what'd you get her? What'd you get her? I bought her a couch. I thought that was your couch. No, no, no. I bought myself a couch, and then she wanted a couch. So I ended up buying her her couch. Bought yourself a couch and her a couch. Yep. Dude, just rolling in the jaw over there. Hey, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work with what I've got, but we've got a jam-packed show like we do every week for you guys, and we're going to be talking some Texas A&M. Could this be Kevin Sumlin's last year at the helm for the Aggies? We're also going to take a look at the Big Twelve and which teams they should look at to a possible expansion, if there is ever going to be an expansion in the Big 12. Then we're going to end the show looking at an unknown stud, as Brandon calls him, in O.J. Howard with the Alabama Crimson Tide. But, Brandon, let's start with Texas A&M, and this is a team that is completely like, if they were a train, they didn't just get off the wheel bearings they are completely off the track and they are riding just on a one-way mission to who knows where they've got players decommitting left and right they've got quarterbacks transferring left and right they have assistant coaches who go on twitter rants and then have to apologize for them and i'm going to be i'm just going to be frank and say it is this going to be kevin sumlin's last year as the head football coach at texas a&m you know, Ricky, I think that that's a, that's a really good question because right now uh, with Texas A&M, what's been going on at least in the sense of these, of these tweets. I mean, now this is now two weeks in a row we've had to talk about tweets coming from someone in the SEC, even though it wasn't in the last couple of weeks because um, not tweets, but tweets are sort of or text messages, something like that within the SEC. I think what if Kevin Sumlin, if he wants to keep his job, honestly, I would have fired that coordinator. I would have. I would have fired him. There's no place for that. There's no place for that in my squad. If I'm Kevin Sumlin, there's no place for that. Uh, you just lost yourself two excellent recruits on the offensive side. And right now, the last time I checked, your offense sucks. Well, yeah, and I mean, the offense hasn't really been anything since – Johnny Manziel left, right? That's the last time that Texas A&M has had a quarterback. And if you're thinking, well, Ricky, I haven't seen any of this. What's going down? The assistant was, um, his last name, it's assistant coach Moorhead. And he went on a Twitter rant, Aaron Moorhead, that is. He said, and I quote, I feel sorry for people, PPL, who never understand loyalty. I can't really even vibe with you. Didn't spell out you, just put the the letter U. At the end of the day, trust is 100 and everything else is BS. And I see this and I go, well, first off, okay. I, I mean, I can understand what you're saying, but first off, I go, if you're an assistant coach and you're sending tweets that 
you can't even spell people or you're going to put the letter U instead of spelling out U and you're going to text basically like a high schooler would, you lose all credibility to me. And that's the thing. And I know that you could say, oh, well, Ricky, he was just using text speak. But that's the first thing I see. You know what? Tweet like a man. Tweet like an actual adult who understands the English language. But on the other side, I say I understand this, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Because the way I see this is these high school kids, the best way I heard it described, and this may spark a different conversation, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. It was when Mike and Mike were talking about a recruit that decommitted from Ohio State because he was walking in the hallway and Urban Meyer didn't recognize him. So he decommitted and uh, Greeny, I believe it said, he said that he hates how it's called commitments. They should just be called agreements because that's what they are. I am agreeing to maybe come to your school until I sign that paper. We use the word commit and it's like, Oh, it's set in stone. You're going to come here. No, these players can flip flop. How many times on national signing day do we put, Oh, well, this guy was committed here, but he's not going to play here anymore. So I, I really don't agree with this. It's like this kid could make the decision to go to your school for whatever reason. And if he doesn't see it as the right fit, it's his right as a kid or as a player, as a human being to say, I don't want to go here. Rich, honestly, I think two things out of this. One, there are only 140 characters that you can use while texting. So you really are limited. So you may have to use the letter U instead of the word U. I will stand up for him in that sense. Twitter is very tricky like that. Only 140 characters, so you got to get creative. The other thing, the other thing, the bigger thing is these are kids. These our kids, no matter how much we want to treat them like adults, from the beginning they get to college as a freshman on the field, they are kids, 18, 19 years old, children, people, kids, okay? So I think that's a huge issue. Another thing, how often do kids act on impulse? And not even just kids, but people. We act on impulse. Someone pisses me off. I, I do something right away based on impulse. Someone says this one of my friends off, I act on impulse for them. You know, how many times have we seen that? That's why I agree with your point. You make it an agreement. That's what it is. It's an agreement that I may come to your school. Because how many times can you change? You don't have to be committed. You can be committed, but then, oop, all of a sudden, I'm no longer committed. That's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Well, and I mean the commit the, or the decommitment, I should say, came from Manny Netherly, in case you did not know. And he had a hunt, more than 140 characters to say in reply to that tweet, but he tweeted out a picture of a note that he made in his phone. And it said, after tonight, I see what kind of person my future coach is and myself don't want to play for someone like that. So without further ado, I would like to announce that I am decommitting from Texas A&M. And to me, this goes right back to the point you made at the beginning of the podcast, Brandon. How the hell did this happen and Kevin Sumlin didn't make any kind of a move? Like, to me, that is, and I'm not saying that necessarily this is something that, you know what, you did it. You're going to get canned. I mean, you can say that. You can be on that extreme. But how many times have we seen people tweet out stupid stuff and it's like, oh, okay, like it wasn't that bad. They probably shouldn't be fired for it. So I don't know if I can say I'm completely 100% in the boat that Moorhead should be fired. However, how has there been no kind of reprimand or reprimation for this from Moorhead besides the fact that Moorhead tweeted out I love Texas A&M football I guard it and respect it with my life I don't take that lightly day to day and end up apologizing for it well I'll be honest with you I do think you should be fired because not only did you lose yourself one recruit you lost yourself two recruits lost yourself possibly three or four recruits. This could go down the line. And if he's tweeting stuff like this out, you're the grown man. You are the grown man. These kids, not 
so much. Stuff like that does happen, okay? He's a grown man. Be a grown up. Be a freaking grown up. You should be fired because you did not honor the Texas A and M name, in my opinion. You did not honor it. If you're if, if you're a Texas A and M guy, have class. Have some class. Don't take to the Twitter world where it's so easy to say whatever you want behind a phone, behind a computer, behind a tablet. Do not do that and then tell me how you respect and you adore and you honor this great program. No, you dishonored the program by doing what you did. Don't go back on it now because it's too late. You lost yourself what you wanted to get. You're the adult. Act like the adult and everything would be okay. That's the problem. So many times that is why people should just stay off of social media when they're upset, when they're angry, anything like that, because that's what not a good thing will come of it. We're learning that. We are learning that. Well, and I mean, the first thing I think of is when you say, oh, behind a tablet, behind a phone, it's kind of like the keyboard warriors that you may see online, no matter what website you are. It's so easy to say something when you don't have to face it face to face. Now, if Netherly and Moorhead were in the same room, I don't think that Moorhead even makes comments nearly remotely close to this because, you know, I, I'm not going to, I know oh, I can, you know, respect the name of Texas A&M however I want and have loyalty, but I just don't think he'd have the cojones to say it face to face. But the one thing I am going to flip this conversation to is more on Sumlin. And because of everything that has happened with the decommitment of this quarterback, the decommitment or transfer, I should say, of two other quarterbacks, yes, you have brought in a transfer to be your starting guy, However, is this a season where Kevin Sumlin, let's say he doesn't get to a bowl game or even goes 6-6 six and six and gets to a bowl game? Does Kevin Sumlin need to do well enough, like let's say maybe two losses or less, to save his job at Texas A&M? I was just going to say Kevin Sumlin's got to be 94 or better. He's got to be 94 or better because if he is not, his job is on the line. His job is on the line. I think people thought that his job would be on the line at the eight and five season last year. They didn't play well. And now seeing that all of these people, one, are not coming and two are leaving, it's not positive signs for the program. How do you get that program? And it's going to be someone who has to do it. She has to take it by the reins and say, hey, this is Texas a and football. This is what we do here. This, we, we need to not necessarily reinvent ourselves, but we need to find ourselves. We need to get back to what we did before. You know, Johnny Manziel was a great football player at Texas a and Under him, the program thrived and flourished. People wanted to be there. People wanted to be those players. Other guys wanted to be those players. Where is that now? Where is that now? Who, who and then also, who on the team is doing that? Who on the team is going out and, and repping the team like that and saying, you know what? This is what Texas A&M football is. This is what you want to be like. I don't see it. I don't see it from the players, Ricky. I don't see where that is. And maybe that's just me. But I think they need to have some some team leaders really step up, really step up to the plate and say, hey, this is our team. We've got to play well. We've got to play well not only for us, but we've got to play well for our folks, too, if we want them to be here after this year. Well, and what you just said, the last thing you got to play for your coach, if Kevin, someone smart, and I don't know how you go across from this from a coach side, it has to, I think it has to come from the players, actually, more when I think about it. This is a perfect way for this season for the for the Aggie players to say, hey, you know what, we got to, let's win this one for the Gipper. Let's do well this season and basically win it for the Gipper. And if Kevin Sumlin's players can come to that kind of, I don't want to say realization, but like that kind of attitude to the season, then I think that, okay, Kevin Sumlin may be able to keep his job. But 
the way I see it is Texas A&M, you've been on a steady decline. You were 11 and 2 in his first year, then 9 and 4, and then 8 and 5 and 8 and 5. And I mean, that's just overall records. He was 6 and 2, 4 and 4, 3 and 5 and then back to 4 and 4 in the SEC and I I don't know. I kind of want to be a little bit bold with this one and when I say that is 9 and 4 may not be enough to cut it because you think of it this way, 9 and 4 is one win better than the Aggies had last season. And if they had nine and four last year, let's I'll give them a conference game. They'd be five and four in conference, and that would mean they'd be tied with LSU. I think you have to be better than that. You have to if you're Kevin Sumlin in order to keep your job, I say you either have to win the West or be second in the West at the least. That's what you need. And to be honest, it ain't gonna happen because Alabama is fucking Alabama, and then Old Miss, they're not chump change. I know everything that we talked about last week with Old Miss and their drama, they're still a good football team, and Arkansas seems to be on the cusp of getting better. So with Texas A&M, I feel like this season, the way I see it, it's not going to be it's not going to be a bad season, like you're not going to go 2 and 6, 1 and 7 in the conference. You're going to be I'd say seven and four at the worst, but if you go seven and four, I feel like no matter what, unless he wins the SEC West, wins the SEC, or finishes one game behind Alabama in the in the division at number two, someone's gone, and we're looking at we're talking about a new era of Texas A and M next season. And I really hope that doesn't happen. I like Kevin Sumlin. I think mean, he's a good coach. I think he's done some really good things there with the guys, but I do think that it's time for him even to step up to the, step up to the plate and say, what can I do better? What can I do better? How do I get these guys motivated to want to go out there and not only win, guys want to win, he wants to win, everyone wants to win, but go out there and then make it happen. Everyone wants to win, but not so many people make it happen all the time. I think that he really needs to re-energize his group, and I think if he does that, However, it will be a daunting task there in the West and the SEC. That thing, because that's a tough-ass division. But I think that it's something that can be done. Can be done if you go out there and play well. 